that is that us, Alana? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I think we're all here. Are we waiting for anyone else? Okay, let's start the meeting. Uh, Town of New Falls Planning Board, May 24th. So administrative business. Um, the approval of the May 10th minutes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So move. Second. Matt, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, we have um, to establish an escrow for the, uh, let's just see, for the Montessori project. Uh, I don't see that. 130 Divorce Road. Um, I'm suggesting a $2,000 escrow. Um, do I have a motion for that? Matt? I'll make a motion for a $2,000 escrow for the Montessori project. With a, I'm sorry, with a $1,000 replenishment. With a $1,000 replenishment. Okay, thank Second. you. Second. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is David here by any chance? I didn't see him. Okay. All right. So I'm um, opening public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment? No, Alana, you see anyone? Don't see anybody. Okay. We're gonna close public comment. First, we have um, the application review for 525 Albany Post Road. Um, we have been presented with a resolution from our attorney, um, Ashley. We're just going to vote on this resolution. Yes, I do have one comment on that. I had spoke to Rick. Um, there's one of the findings about the sidewalk waiver. So that's on page three, I believe, of the resolution. Um, I don't believe this was specifically discussed. So the way the sidewalk requirements work in your code, it's applicable to either a collector street or a minor street. So I don't believe there's been a um, determination by the board yet whether there this road constitutes a collector or a minor or an arterial. If it's an arterial street, then the sidewalk requirements do not apply. If it's a collector or a minor, then you would have to discuss whether or not to waive that um, sidewalk requirement. So, I remember our the sidewalk requirements were discussed. Lyle brought it up about the trees and the sidewalks specifically. That's and my correct. recollection, correct me if I'm wrong, is that it was waived. Am I That's correct? Is that correct? That's the way I, I understand it. This is Robert James. That's the way I understand it. I thought they were waived, but we would okay. a right of way, right? Something like that. Lyle, you remember this discussion? No. I don't recall a right of way, but I, I do remember they being waived. Yes, specifically waived, because Lyle said um, he asked on the um, application, he said, what about sidewalks and sidewalk trees? And, you know, what about that? Because that wasn't covered. So that so we did actually, even though he doesn't remember it, I remember it very specifically, and the sidewalk was waived. Okay. So Ashley, that's good enough for you, Ashley. Is it? So then that could stay. There, then there's no changes that need to be made to the to the resolution. Okay. Okay. So do we need to read the specific conditions? Yes, yes. we do. I think. Yeah. Yes, I had asked Jane if she would read them. Um, okay. Ashley, from, from the conditions? Page four, Ashley. For the specific conditions? Yeah, right? Yes, I believe. Okay. All right, number one, prior to signing of the plat, the applicant must provide proof to the building department that it has paid to the town clerk in full the recreation fee for the additional lot created by this subdivision. 
Um, would the um, recreation fees be specified here or it's just specified separately? So the recreation fees are something that the town board sets. Okay. So Two, prior to the issuance of a building permit for the newly created lot, one, all approvals for necessary septic and well for said lot shall be secured. And two, the property owner must request that the New York State DEC reevaluate potential impacts to bald eagle nests per DEC email dated April 26, 2021. A response from the DEC must be reviewed by the building department and construction may proceed only in accordance with the DEC response. Three, in accordance with the February 26, 2021 email from New York State Parks Recreation and Historic Preservation, there shall be no disturbance east southeast of the existing stone wall to the Stony Kill Brook to avoid potential impacts to archaeological resources unless prior authorization for such disturbance is secured from the New York State Parks Recreation and Historic Preservation. And fourth, finally, prior to the signing of the plat, a note shall be added to the plat as follows, quote, the property is located in an archaeologically sensitive area. Any future disturbance east southeast of the existing stone wall on the vacant lot, lot 2B, is that east southeast of the proposed residential structure and sewage disposal area to the Stony Kill Brook shall require prior review and approval by the Town of New Paltz Planning Board and the New Paltz State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation Division for Historic Preservation, close quote. Um, there is a, a typo in number four, residential has a T, not a C. I don't know if that's applicable. I think there's one more, Jane. Yeah, there's one more specific condition, number five. It carries on to the top of the next page. Ah, uh, that, just a second. Would you mind reading that? I don't have that on this printout that I made. I apologize. In accordance with the New York State DEC, no blasting or similar lab construction noise shall occur on the subdivided lots to avoid impacts to the Pied Bill Grebes in the area. Grebes. Grebes. That's it. Don't disturb the Greeps. I have a question about um, number three, if I may. Okay. Um, I thought that we had discussed that there would be a certain time period because the way this is written, if I were ready to go build tomorrow, I still have to go back to the DEC and hope I get a response from them. So I thought we had said something like a year or 18 months. Um, you know, I think, uh, the point was made that had we, if we sit on it for years and don't do anything, you would want to make sure there's no eagle nesting happening. My recollection on that again was that, and, and others chime in please, that because the bald eagles, they said it right now, there are no nests on the property, but they said because the bald eagles are uh, in in the process of building new nests that they do it on a yearly basis. So that my recollection again is within a year of building, you would have to have clearance from the DEC that there were no eagles nests on the property so okay. that you could build. That, that sounds- that, Does that, that sound right to I you? I remember, I remember there was a year in there or something. It was a year, it was within a year. My understanding is that, is it like, say if you waited two years, you'd have to check each year to see that there were no nests that had built, but if been built ready, if within ready, the 12, within the 12 months. Construction in say November, um, it will fall within the 12 month period that we've done the DEC check. So we would be able to go, but according to this, I, it you doesn't- be held up and it doesn't have the year period, but I don't think that, that the year was the DEC response, the year was the time for the checking. The year was the planning board's response. The DEC didn't say anything. They just said, there's no sign of eagle nesting. Huh. So I the DEC believe. said there's no, um, currently there's no nest in the area, but new nests are discovered every year. So it's always a good idea to check back with us as the project plans progress. 
So they didn't there. I have seen in the past with other applications, the DEC will say, this is good. You know, this determination is good for a year. Come back if you don't complete construction within the year. But it doesn't seem like they had said that they do mention that new nests are um, discovered every year. So how can we, um, do we need to have, change this? Yeah, might be adjusted because the year, it, it isn't quite, this uh, number two isn't sort of totally coinciding with what we said to Mr. Albrecht. So would you, I'm just gonna, yeah, these notes here. What if Something you did good, but within a year, prior or within a year prior to the issuance the property only must request the or yeah within a year with that Maybe if, if construction is not completed within a year of the DEC's April 26 21 email then the property owner must request the DEC reevaluate I'd like to say one thing it, we couldn't possibly say construction completed nobody's going to build a house in a year can I make a suggestion that so and the the two eyes, if after April 26, 2022, the property owner must request so that if it's been more than a year more, then you need to request a new a fresh DC. I think we're all in agreement. It's just how you word it. So but I think the constructor house you take six months. Now, really? So, uh, Depends on the house. It house that took a year and a half. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to get some pipes fixed can take six months. So it's does that fix it if we change it to April 26, 2022? Andy? I think it does, Ashley. If you say if, if after April 26, 2022, the property owner must request the DEC, but if it's before that time, then they don't need to get a new DEC letter. Where does that put us with this um, resolution? Then the first, I guess the first one though, because you still need the all approvals. Yeah, so I would put Maybe it- we could at, just make it into two. So we'll have prior to the issuance of a building permit for the newly constructed lot, one, we'll say the same. And then two, we'll say if right. after April 26, 2021, the property owner must request that the DEC reevaluate per the DEC email of April 26th. I'm okay with that. Okay. So um, can we move forward with this as amended? Yes. And the other correction too, I will make to correct the spelling of residential in condition number four. Thank you. There, there's, there's a couple other uh, um, items. This is Bob James again. Uh, on page um, page two, where it says letter from applicant's architect, um, uh, I'd like that changed to engineer or surveyor. Item seven. Let me just pull up with that. Um... Number seven, you're saying? Could it say letter from, and that's the letter from Our Mr. James, that's from you? Can I say letter from your firm, the A? Yep, yep, use that, okay. that's fine. And then the same thing on page three, first paragraph of, second paragraph of findings. So I'll change it to A, and I'm sorry for the pronunciation, A, D, A, dietitian. Okay. Oh, I see it. Okay, and I'm sorry, the second one was Page in the three. findings? Yep, just above recreation fees. Okay. Sure. Okay, so do we need to note the, the, uh, the changes before we vote on this? We'll just say as amended. Yeah, if you want me to run through them quickly, that way everyone's on the same page, I'll, I'm happy to do that. I think that would be good. So the first change is um, under the identification of the plans, number seven, the letter is from applicant's architect, now reads letter from A. Dia Chisholm and Associates PC. 
on page yep. three have the second paragraph in the findings. The letter dated March 31st is noted as being from a um, dietitian and associates. On page four, specific condition number two has been revised so that after the little two eyes, it reads if after April 26, 2021, comma, and then continues the property owner must request that the DEC reevaluate and goes on as it's reflected. 2022, no? Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> thank you. Can't go back in time. Okay. And then in specific condition number four, um, residential, it's in the one, two, three, the fourth line down residential, the spelling of that's corrected. The C is changed to a T. Thank you. Hey. I have a motion to accept the resolution as amended. So move. Second. Any discussion on this? Any further discussion? Um, I have a question, just some clarification, please. Um, the, is some of this going to be put on the map or is this uh, agreement or how does it work? I'm not sure I understand the question. Is what going to be put on the map? These conditions or how So I it... think one of them specifically does require, uh, let me. So I think it's the condition number four requires a note be added to the map about the archeological sensitive area. But that's the only one with the actual map note that I'm seeing. Okay. Okay. That's all I had. Thank you. All Thank in you. favor? It's unanimous. Alana, I'm sorry, can you just do a roll call on this? Yeah, I'm sure. Hold on, let me just copy and paste the names. So Adele? Aye. Kyle? Aye. Matt? Aye. Jennifer? Aye. Jane? Aye. Thank you. I'd like to ask Mr. Albrecht a, a question, if I may. And it's gone through, so I, I hope that you'll tell us candidly. How did you find this process? Did you find this to be a difficult process? Did you find it to be more or less what you expected? Did you feel that it was uh, more than you expected or less? Or just how did you feel about this in general? Could, would you mind telling us? I don't mind. Um, I think part of the process made a lot of sense to me. And I think it's uh, helpful to you know, have a community the way you want to have it. But I found some of the process um, got to a point where I felt that I was being punished for having a large lot with a lot of restrictions, where if I had had a 2.5 acre lot, I don't think I would have the same restrictions. Restrictions in what sense, uh, Mr. Albrecht? Um, I've, where I can put the house, um, if I need to move the house, you know, we talked about that when we were on site. Um, I, I felt that the process going through with the board, especially on site when there was a human connection was very positive and you could see what we were trying to do. Um, but then I felt like there was a legal side that came into play that felt very heavy. Legal in respect of, did you, you mean the discussion that went on with the you and the ENCB and one of our members about where the house would had to be placed on the, while we were in the site visit? Is that what you're referring to? No, um, our previous meeting um, on Zoom. Right. Was that with respect to the to the um, archaeological aspect or the ecological aspect? If I could ask. Um, well, I'm not really sure what it was about. I think that was a challenge. I feel that your attorney, 
advised you to do certain things and they felt very controlling and unnecessary. Okay, do you wanna be more specific or you just wanna leave it there? Um, I mean, Chair Ruger, when we were on site and I, we saw the water over there and I said, this is kind of where the house is going. I'm a designer. I would come out, I would look at it. You know, maybe it's gonna be 10 feet that way, 15 feet that way, but this is kind of what we're trying to do. Like, and then Mr. Golden felt like it had to be right there and there's no end if or buts. So- I feel that's part of the problem um, with that was that you, there was an option that maybe you weren't aware of that you could have asked for a bare subdivision um, approval where you could have decided later where the house was gonna go. But since we were approving your lot with the house, I think legally we had to know where the house was going to go. But yeah, if I could I just, just touch on that quickly. So there is- But, but would, that, would that have- um, there's two types of subdivision. So as the chair noted, you could have just a, a bare subdivision where you have to show that each lot's buildable, that it's able um, to support a single family home. It has the, the right water, sewer, and all that um, access and everything. And then the second option is uh, what was pursued here was it was actually a subdivision with site plan elements. So because it was proposing specific site plan elements, I believe at one of the, the prior meetings, it was asked whether this is being proposed, um, you know, for approval of the actual site plan elements versus a bare subdivision, and um, it was the the former. So that's why that. So it was a function of the way okay. the drawing was done, Ashley, with okay, the, with the but house let, located. Let, let me ask this: If we had proposed a bare subdivision, would we have had to come back to the planning board to specify where the house was going? Yes. Who said? Who just said yes? Who said yes? <laughs> no, and, and I, I think you might have to do that in, in the village, but I don't believe you have to do that in the town. No, in the town, you just have to have, you have a to get a building permit. And, really? And, and get so we, we wouldn't have had to go through all of this rigmarole with the archaeological and the... Uh, well, well, those were still issues, though, because you're, you need to show it's buildable, right? right? So if there's restrictions, environmental constraints on the property, those need to be... You but know, then the building department would go through all that? You can you know, build, for example, well, that- So the building department would have handled all that? No, I think that would have still come up as part of the-, the Part subdivision. of the subdivision. It was, it would have been so we would have been back to the planning board. No, no, no. You would have gotten your subdivision, but all of those things would have had to have been looked at prior to the approval. But exactly where the house was going to be would not have to, is, okay. would not have to be part of it. My recollection is the house was on the plan, right? If you had just had the subdivision without the house on the plan, I think what they're trying to say, and correct me if I'm misspeaking, Ashley, then it would have been a different situation and it would not have involved the location of the house because the house wouldn't have been located. Okay. okay. So we're, we're good now, so. Okay. Uh, Thank you, and, and thank you, you. Have, and thank you for your candor. I, I I felt a little pain, and I wanted to kind of explore that with you. And I appreciate your being, you know, candid with us, because we really would, you know, we want to be user friendly. I appreciate and it. when it when it starts to feel like it isn't as user friendly as it should be, then I think it's important to to clarify. So thank you very much. If I could just touch on that too, though, I just want to just to to clarify, Jane, what you had said. So they would though show have to show that there's somewhere a house could fit that would comply with zoning so even if it's not something they don't want to pursue to the site plan level of detail they would still have to show a show house it. that it you know that it could fit a house that would comply with zoning okay 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 thank you thank you very much thank you. okay i think next is um tesla Someone here from Tesla? from Tesla? Hi, yes, Ed Noseworthy is on with Tesla. Hi, how are you? Hey, I'm doing well, how are you? Good. So, uh, Ashley, we have uh, a resolution of, of approval, of conditional approval here. Can we move forward to that? Yes, you can move forward. Okay. 
Um, any questions from the applicants? Have you received this? Uh, yeah, I don't think we have any questions, no. Okay, and I don't see any specific. No specific conditions. Yeah, I don't believe there's any specific conditions with this one. Jennifer, you're off the hook. <laughs> All right, so we're going to just move to um, a motion to approve this resolution. I'd, I'd like to just say something first. Okay. Uh, just a, sort of a comment. Uh, um, there was a letter in the uh, local paper recently about uh, this application, and uh, uh, and there was an article in New York Times recently saying that Tesla was the Apple. Uh, phone of cars because of the specific specificity of the charging stations and everything they're locking people into a brand and by approving this we're locking people into a brand like the, the these chargers won't serve anybody else than tesla so that will encourage people to buy a tesla in in fact when the it it's it's a sort of a monopoly power type thing. It's not a real monopoly, but it's heading in that direction. And I just wanted to. Uh, I, I think uh, we're pretty far along on this, and we might not have done anything different. But I would just like to have people be aware of that factor out there, and they can look it in the. Uh, uh, I think it was in the uh, local paper, and it was in the New York Times. And uh, there was an email, right, uh, Alana? Yes. Yeah, that, the letter wasn't written by the person that emailed, was it? Uh, I can't remember. Uh, I'm blanking on his name. Robert Feldman. Yes. Yeah. There is nothing stopping uh, a charging station from being placed in the town, in the village or the town. Uh, they just need to come and get approval. Or, or you're saying it should be a publicly owned char charging station? No, I'm, I'm just saying that, that we have to be aware, like, you know, like New Paltz always uh, is, is sort of blocking out big franchises and big business from as much as possible. Over the years, that's been like a tendency of people's thought. And they're, they're letting this one slip by, I think. Can I say that some as somebody that has been shopping this very week for an electric car that I can name off the top of my head six charging stations uh, that are not Tesla because the Tesla one doesn't exist within you know the, the corridor of the village of the 299 corridor there's one now of course at, at McDonald's there's one at Village Hall there's three at, in one parking lot at SUNY there are four or five in, in another one, and then yet more in the other parking lot. I mean, they're really starting to come out. There's one at the community center. Now, if I don't own the car and can name those off the top of my head, you know, I think it's, it's hard to make a case that there's a monopoly anywhere. <laughs> Okay, I stand corrected. But, but I think well, yeah, I'm not correcting you. I'm just saying it's it's you know. I think the point is that the other charging yeah. stations are more um, you know other different types brands can use those charging stations, and with the Tesla ones you can't. But I didn't know if there was an adapter that is possible. There is. There's an adapter to be able to use a Tesla at a regular charging station, but not vice versa. Exactly. You can't use, uh, um, as far as I know. But, um, hey, Dell. Yes. Uh, Tim is on the call and he just had a question. Tim Roger, okay. he wanted to yeah. ask about this one. Okay. Hi, Tim. Hey, Adele. Um, you could just Google, you can buy an adapter uh, for other EVs to use at Tesla super supercharging stations. Is that true? I didn't know that. Is Mr. Yeah. Shelworthy still on the call? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, so it's that correct true? that our our network is proprietary to our cars. There's no there's no adapter out there that you'd be able to use to charge at our stations unless you're a Tesla driver. Right. It's the other way around, Tim. You can you take a Tesla adapter and put it on a regular charging station. Yeah. But you can't. Well, I know you can buy that, but what what is being sold online that that um, is an adapter in the other direction. 
Nothing. And, and I believe Elon Musk has said the same thing that you can buy an adapter to use at Tesla supercharging stations. And he's not sure why people don't do that. So what, what Elon has said, and we're allowed to disclose naturally things that he's tweeting and, and releasing at, you know, public events is that the intention of our network is to open up to the general public at some point. Um, we're not there yet, but at some point, um, we, we do want to allow other OEMs to, to charge at our infrastructure. Um, like I said, he's, he's tweeted that. He's been clear about that. Um, there's no sort of details along to go with that, but into the future, that is the idea behind our charging infrastructure. But right now, it's, it's our customers only. But you can buy an adapter, even if this is not set up for that at this no. time. But the plan is to make it so that any EV could charge at a Tesla station. Eventually. Yeah, you, you might be talking about maybe a different market in another country, but right now there, there's no adapter. It's just our charging network is for our cars only. Um, and you wouldn't be able to charge there unless you had a Tesla. Okay. Thank you. So do we have a motion to accept this resolution? So move. Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion, any further discussion? All in favor? If you could just do a roll call on this one as well. Okay. Adele, aye. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Uh, Lyle? Aye. Matt? Aye. Jennifer? Aye. Jane? Aye. Okay, you guys have it. Bye, guys. Anonymous. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have. Um, 130 uh, Du Bois Road, uh, Montes Trapani, Montessori. Uh, Matt's gonna uh, present this. Uh, are the applicants here? I think I saw them. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Patty Brooks is here representing uh, Whispering Woods and Joy Trapani um, is here as well. How's it going? Very well. Um, so <laughs> we're gonna, we have a couple questions, but we're gonna start with Mr. Willingham about the comments that he wrote and just talk about that for a second. So Andy. Okay, so so as I understand it, the this was approved in uh, 2015 and it talked about starting with 25 students, but it was approved for 45 students um, at that time. So this looks like there's they're not increasing, they're staying at 45 students, they're just doing an addition to have more space and a bath, small addition for a bathroom is how I understand it. And if that's the case, then this becomes a much more simple application. So my comments were just that I, I saw that the, the septic was approved and I just, there wasn't a flow rate on there. So I just wanted to make, just verify that the septic was installed for 25 students. It was installed for 45 students. Um, Provide a written a written request for any waivers needed from site plan uh, elements on the site plan, and then lastly, there's a little piece of fenced in area that goes onto the property to the south, and I, as I understand, they own both properties. But I don't know. This might be a better question for Ashley, but it seems more clean cut. They want to do an easement over that area over the, over the property to use it. Seems more clean cut to just put a piece of fence and, and keep all the use for this, uh, this use on one property. Um, that was it. Okay. okay so, so can we just answer the question? So was everything approved for 45 kids initially? Yes, it was. Okay, so that's what we just had to clarify that. And I, I have to agree with Andy about the fence, like putting things on two properties always gets a little confusing um, down the road because it's approved for one property, not for both properties. So 
I saw that that fence looks like it's just a small triangle that's going into the other property. Um, can we adjust it maybe to fit on the one or is that a big space? So the adjoining property is owned actually by the applicants, although it's a separate tax parcel. Um, so we didn't think that it really would be, you know, it's a it's a very small section of fence, but again, having to relocate the, the fence when they're already use, utilizing that space and it squares off the backyard. So it is currently being utilized by the students. Um, okay. So Ashley, I guess, is, is are we gonna have to do something else because it's on two parcels? Yeah, so since it's on two parcels, you would need the other property to be part of the site plan application as well. Um, if it's owned by the same party, the easement issue is a little more complicated because you can't have an easement uh, to yourself typically. So if you wanted to have something in there to protect, you know, in the future, if they were to to sell that adjacent property, that way they could continue to use it because that's what's going to be approved here. Um, we could frame it in some way that it'll uh, the easement will spring into effect, you know, in the future once at that time of that future sale. But if they are going to be proposing to keep it as it is, then the other um, property does need to be part of the application as well. Yeah, they certainly would not want to encumber that entire property by um, by the site plan application because obviously that would restrict their further um, ability to subdivide it and so forth. So I'll discuss it with the applicants, um, you know, now with the knowledge of, of what it would take to leave the fence there um, and determine what best should happen. We, we, we had another case recently where it was a, a trucking company and they owned the adjoining property and they were parking trailers and equipment on the uh, neighboring property, which wasn't approved for that use. So these things do come up, you know, on, on crossing over the line. It's better not to say anything than to uh, try and establish some, uh, you know, legitimate cause for it, you know? It, it's also really small. It's like, it's the size of like a parking space. So is there, I mean, is there something special about that little triangle that you wanna, you wanna use? Or seems like a lot of, effort to, for a little space. If I could just mention that, uh, you know, during the pandemic, we set up some tents in the backyard and we're utilizing every possible area that we have. The fence company that installed the fence in error, put it on, squared it off um, because the lot is like a weird triangular shaped. Uh, it was an accident. If we're required to move it, I will move it. Um, but it would be really helpful if we could get that easement. Um, we own the school property as an LLC and we purchased the land next door, partially, you know, just to have uh, extra space if we wanted it. Um, but we didn't want to join the lots yet. Um, so if there's any way we could have that little space and then an easement, that would be great. And if not, then Patty and I will discuss if we have to move the fence. Was moving that LLC that owns both parcels? No, the LLC. No. Oh, okay. So then that's that's different. That eliminates the issue I was concerned about about being owned by the same party. Right. Um, we own the land next door. Is there a setback for a fence, um, Andy? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Are you guys considering? joining the properties or you're not ready for that move yet we're not ready for it it came on auction and uh it was soon after the realization that the fence was on that other property so we thought that it helped to solve that issue uh, when it was brought up at the planning board meeting previously and we just bought it to have it so that we can keep it wooded and uh, you know beautiful next next door so that we didn't have another house moving in right next to the school right when we became before the board we you know we only had a small group of kids and now you know we're, we're we've expanded and just want to have a little more space for them that's all we're yep. looking so patricia you can talk to her about that and come back to us i guess 
Yeah, well, I, I guess in, in light of the fact that one of the properties is owned by the LLC and the other property is owned by them individually, um, you know, it, it seems that it is a possibility to do the easement um, and leave it the way it is. I mean, is, is the planning board totally adverse to that? As a condition of our approval? I'm not adverse to it. Not adverse to it. I think I think if you come back and show that to us, um, yeah, we are willing to stipulate it in the plan. Yeah, it it is shown on the site plan right now that the easement um, to be granted to Whispering Woods LLC for the area of the fence located on lands of Trapani and Bonra. Stipulated on the map at this point. It sounds like it's a paperwork situation. So I think Ashley's going to have to take a look at it and figure out how we're going to word that. Right? Yeah, so in addition to being shown on the map, there would be an easement agreement between the two property owners. So saying what it is, you know, it's locating the fence there and also allowing, you know, the school to utilize that section of the property, uh, things like that. Does that get added to the deed? It, it would be something, would, an easement that would be filed would, with the county clerk. So it would be um, in the chain of title for the deed. We would file a separate easement agreement between them. Yes. So Ashley, do you have a template um, easement agreement that you would like the applicants to consider or should they have their attorney draft something? I think it would make sense to have your attorney draft something. I just don't think there's anything I have that's similar to this is kind of a unique um, easement. I can't think of anything offhand that would be comparable. So Ashley, if I can, um, my name is Eileen Benaira. Um, I'm also the co-owner of the uh, property in question. Um, is it something that we could stipulate as a condition of approval um, that if the property ever transferred, we would move the fence? Um, I'd be happy to you know, stipulate that in the as a condition of the resolution because it, it really is, a, it's a very small section. Um, the property transferring would require a subdivision. There's zero frontage of that lot. If you look on a tax map, there's about five feet of frontage. So it would require our whole project to come in for a subdivision and everything. So the likelihood of it changing hands is unlikely, number one, without a subdivision. And then the second thing is it, it's really like, you know, it seems to be a little overkill for, I'm going to say probably 20 square feet. And it's particularly different than um, what Mr. Nolan had described with a commercial or industrial property. You know, so it's it's nothing that there's going to be some creeping activity. Uh, we would be back before the board for that. And, um, the, you know, that's just my, you know, my request if possible. So again, Eileen, what we're proposing to do is just to file an easement with the county clerk because I, this, uh, if the fence is on another property, that property has to be part of the application for the site plan. And I don't think you want to do that. No, I d we definitely don't want to do that. So it's so not, if I could just, maybe I could just correct um, or maybe clarify what, what it's meant by that. So that the other property has to be part of this site plan. Part of their property is going to be used as part of this site plan. So they do have to, you know, file um, an owner's endorsement saying, yes, I authorize. I understand it's the same applicant in a sense, but it's a different LLC. So someone needs to be submitting that paperwork to say, yes, we're this other LLC is authorizing this. Um, and then that piece is going to be part of, um, you know, it's going to restrict how that part of the site, that adjoining site can be used. So it's going to be a, essentially a site plan for that portion of the, the site as well. So that's what is meant by it has to be part of this. Okay. That other property has to be, you know, looked at as part of this application. Okay, so we'll we'll discuss that with Patty then. And then the easement um, gives a legal, you know, ability for for the school to use that property that's owned by by a different entity. Okay. So just so that I'm clear, if they leave the fence where it is, it would require two things: the easement and the inclusion of that property in the site plan application. Yes. Okay. So we'll decide. We'll decide. Yeah. Um. Does does anybody have anything else? I have just a couple of cons procedurally. Under Seeker, it's a type two action. Um, and it does require referral to the Ulster County Planning Board under general municipal law. 
Um, Under what criteria? So the property is within, um, let me see where it is. Yeah, I'm not thinking it meets any of the criteria. No. You could just give me one minute. Absolutely. We do need to circulate the ag data statement, which was not a requirement in 2014, now that Carl Family Farms has gone in across the street with their cattle farm. Um, but we still do not trigger any um, Ulster County Planning Board referral. Sorry, I'm just looking for it. I was not originally covering this meeting, so I'm just trying to find the specific basis. I know that it didn't qualify as the reuse or reoccupancy exemption under the agreement with Ulster County because there was the addition. Um, Andy, do you know if that's correct? Are they not within 500 feet of a trigger? You're on mute. I'm on mute. All right. um, I don't think they're not within 500 feet of a uh, town boundary or municipal, ba municipal boundary, not a state road. I know you said the ag district form was required. So is it within 500 feet of an active farm? Active farm, maybe? Yeah, but I don't think that the, I would have to pull it up. I mean, certainly that's something that, that we can work out if it needs to be um, circulated, but I don't think that, because it's within 500 feet of an active farm, but there's another criteria to that. So, but if it needs to be referred, I, I would say that, that I would like to review a, um... the- yeah. So Carl, Carl Farms across the street, right? Yes. So that's probably where you got it, um, Ashley. Yeah, the boundary of a farm operation located in an agricultural um, an agricultural district district. So it's in an ag district, correct? This property is not it in is an ag district. The farm is in the um, the county ag district. The farm is in the county ag district. So that's what then would trigger that the boundary of a farm operation located in an ag district, as defined under. Um, Article 25 AA of the Ag and Markets Law. And it's active. Right, right. It is active, absolutely. It's a cattle farm. Okay. Um, Matt, we want to, we have to type this. You want to? Yeah, so motion? I'll make a, can I make a motion and make it a type two? Right, I make a motion that the Trapini project, we'll call it, um, is a type two action under seeker. Second that. Okay, any Good discussion call. on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous, Ashley. Okay. Thank you. This, I, does, this does have to go to county, right? Do we have to make a motion to send it to county? Um, you, you can. I don't know if this board normally does. Some boards do. We don't normally. I don't think you normally do. Yeah, I think you just acknowledge that it, it'll be referred and then Alana will take care of that. Yeah, so mm -hmm. their meeting is next week. I can, I feel like usually they want more time, but I can try and get in touch with Rob Leibowitz tomorrow and see if he'll accept it. 
Um, maybe if like their agenda is not too packed, they'll, they won't have a problem with it. But if, if they say, no, it's too late, I'll let you know, or I'll CC you on the email patty then when I send it, does that work? Okay. That okay. would be great. Mm -hmm. And then usually um, if it has to go up to Rob, I send him, I email him the package so that he has everything for the meeting. Yeah, yeah, I do it in Dropbox and then I email him and I'm like, everything's up there. Um, but I'll, I'll get in touch with him first to make sure that, you know, they'll Great. accept it and everything. I appreciate that. Yeah. Is there anything else? Oh, sorry, Matt. No, I, th I was just going to say, does anybody have anything else? I think that's it until next time. We, we don't have to have a public hearing, right? No, the public hearing is discretionary. Okay, so I think we're good. Okay. Um, I um, think, I'm sorry, I just recalled, and I think Andy had given his comments already, so they should know, but there was, I think, the request for the written waivers of whatever. Yeah, I'll okay. get with Andy because I read okay. through them today and I didn't see where any were applicable, but I want, um, I just want to have somebody else review that and, and make sure that I don't need to request any waivers. Okay. okay. So no public hearing is required for this? No, no, that's correct. And so obviously no posting then. Okay. So we would be back on the agenda for which meeting? June well, it depends on what the what the county gets back to us. So right? we can ask for placement on the June fourteenth meeting, and then the board just wouldn't be able to act if you don't have Ulster County Planning Board comments. Is that the correct? Okay. So if it's possible, I guess I would request at this time to be placed on the June fourteenth agenda, and we'll hope that we have Ulster County Planning Board comments yeah. back. I don't know what our I don't know what that meeting's agenda looks like. Alana knows. You know, I can all tentatively, we can put it on there, assuming that the county decides to review it. And they usually, like I said, they get back to me with comments, you know, the next day, a day later. So you would definitely have them by the meeting. So fingers crossed. Fingers yeah. crossed. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for your assistance this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Thanks, Matt. Okay, um, next on the agenda is uh, 200 Mountain Rest Road. I think the way um, to introduce this, maybe we hear from the applicant, who, the applicants to Village of New Falls. Um, and then we hear from our engineer and then Ashley. Is that, okay? is that good? Sound good? Okay, so who's here to speak for the village? Oh, I don't hear you. It's muted. It's, it's actually it doesn't look muted, but it's not working. It says it's muted. Mine says she's not muted. My, mine doesn't show as, it doesn't look as though she's muted. Tim is here too. Okay. Can you hear me now? It's good. Hello, try again. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. okay, here you go. Sorry about that. Um, I'm Karen Lobruto. I'm a senior planner with the Chase and Companies and um, we are here to present uh, our, the proposal for the subdivision. Um, I've got a presentation I'll share. Let's see here. Um, <clears throat> So Village of New Paltz Groundwater Resource Development Project. Um, uh, as you guys are probably already aware, the village has been working for a while to find clean and reliable water sources at an affordable price for water district customers. Um, they've determined that a cost-effective and simple option is to increase the amounts of locally sourced groundwater for the village and town residents served by the municipal system, which would involve the installation of four new groundwater source wells that will provide supplemental water to top up the reservoirs that currently service the village's water system. The primary motivation is to increase the capacity of the reservoirs in a cost-effective manner. Um, the town of New Paltz is a beneficiary, as well as town residents, um, our water district customers, and the village and SUNY New Paltz water customers as well. Uh, the New York City Department of Environmental Protection or DEP is providing funding to support the project. 
So here's a picture of the site. Um, the larger parcel is the town owned parcel. The smaller parcel is the parcel that's proposed for subdivision from the Mohonk property. Uh, located at 200 Mountain Rest Road, two tax parcels, uh, zoned agricultural A3. Um, as, as I mentioned, the town of New Paltz owns the larger parcel, it's leased to the village for water utility purposes. Uh, the portion of the small portion shown there is part of a much larger 200 acre owned uh, parcel by the uh, Mohawk Preserve. Um, the proposed project is connect and operate four new water source wells for water supply purposes. Um, we're here uh, with regard to the subdivision of the 2.4 acre area, <clears throat> which is necessary to allow for an additional well and protective buffer as required by the New York State Sanitary Code. The parcel would be conveyed to the town and converted to water utility, uh, which is a permitted use within the A3 district. Uh, the parcels would be consolidated. Um, so we're requesting a subdivision approval. And um, on uh, May 20th, waivers were granted by the town for uh, site plan, grading, and steep slope permits. Uh, here's a list of the other permits and approvals that are required. Um, as you are probably already aware, the Village of New Paltz is the lead agency for the seeker review of this project. Um, other permits and approvals include um, the reimbursement approval to be reimbursed by the New York City Department of Environmental Protection. Um, there are no actual, there are no area variances needed any longer. That was something we sorted out some time ago. Uh, Department of Health from state and county approval, Department of Environmental Conservation for water withdrawal and water quality certificates. And of course, the uh, acquisition of this 2.4 acre parcel by the town board of New Paltz. Um, so just to talk a little about the design, the wells are six inches in diameter and installed uh, to a depth of 500 feet below ground. Um, the well design and locations were approved by Ulster County's Department of Health um, and the state DC. Um, water quality analyses indicate that the water is of good quality, requiring routine disinfection, treatment for manganese and iron, and that water quality is not directly influenced by surface water quality from the nearby streams or wetlands. Uh, the water will be pumped directly into the existing surface water reservoirs and combined well water and surface water will be treated by the existing water treatment plant. So this shows a little bit of the design. Um, this is the parcel, the 2.4 acre parcel that's proposed to be subdivided from the Mohonk, from the larger 200 acre Mohonk parcel and consolidated with the town's parcel here. Um, you see the three other wells on the town's property um, marked with these circles, which are the buffers that I spoke of before required by New York State Sanitary Code. Um, and that's what I've got. I've got um, the survey here showing the proposed <coughs> lot line subdivision, sorry, lot line adjustment, I guess. And I'll leave it at that. Okay, um, Andy, let's see you. Thank you. Okay, so um, this project, um, it's, it was a little tricky kind of procedurally figuring out all the, the pieces of it, but it seems like it got more simple in the last, in the last few days. So it would have required, if this was just a regular project by, by an applicant, um, it would have required a site plan approval and clearing grading permit, a um, steep slopes permit and subdivision approval from this planning board. But as you could probably describe this better, there are a lot since the village of New Paul's is the applicant and the town of New Paul's is getting the land, you can waive zoning permits. So there on Thursday night, the town board waived the clearing and grading requirements, the um, steep slopes requirements, and the site plan requirement. So it does not have to get approved by this board. Subdivision, they can't wait. So we're still looking at this project. This board is as for subdivision, lot line revision. Um, and then as far as the environmental review, I thought that this board was going to be the agency. So a couple of my comments are related to that, but it turns out the village board is a lead agency. So 
Um, Ashley can get into more of uh, the seekers kind of work. So really the only, the only one of my comments that really, um, so my comments are only related to the subdivision. And uh, I just had a couple of minor things. It was, it was pretty complete. Um, so just a written request for any waivers, if you go through the subdivision code and if there's anything that's not on that map you need a waiver for, just you need to provide a written request. It's been the town's policy to get a written request for sidewalk improvements for any any subdivision, um, which I imagine would be, this isn't really a candidate for sidewalks. Um, and actually the, the, the rest of my comments are related to the seeker process, which I don't think applies to this board now that it's gonna be the village board that's handling seeker. Um, and that was it. And I, uh, I'll, I'll only add that it's a good project for the town of New Poles to get their own water supply and not have to buy it, buy it from the uh, DEP. So it's a good project. It was my understanding, thanks Andy. It was my understanding that we um, need to vote in order to have the village become the lead agency. Ashley, is that true? So I don't believe that this board has previously consented to the village um, or being the, the lead agency. So I don't know, Karen might have a, a better idea of the notice of intent process and, and when that happened, but I think it would be appropriate tonight for this board to consent, um, vote to consent or consider a motion to consent to the village board of trustees acting as lead agency. Yes, I don't. that did not happen yet, as far as I know. So I could just provide a bit more context if you don't mind. Okay. Um, yeah, we did circulate the lead agency notice of intent. Um, I believe it was on March 26th. And so it's a 30 day circulation notification period during which if you were objecting, you would object at that point. But after the 30 days is up, it's acknowledged as consent for seeker. Did we ever receive that? You should have. So part of, it, part of it is my, is my mistake. So I received that a while back and I had reached out to whoever the engineer was originally from Chazen and I had asked for a digital copy because it was a very thick copy and I wanted to be able to circulate it digitally. And then I ended up getting in touch with, with Karen and then there was the whole process of dealing with the application itself. So I honestly wasn't quite sure what was going on with the notice of intent. So I will I will own that that was a mistake on my part, I guess. Um, but that was essentially what had happened because the whole project got a little confusing because a bunch of different stuff happened at one point <laughs> about what was actually being applied for. And then we got different versions of plans and, and all that stuff. So that's my fault. Well, what happens legally, Ashley, if we hadn't had proper notice? Um, if you haven't, I mean, have we had proper notice? It was, I guess it was sent to you um, by being sent to Alana. So I think arguably you did. I think uh, at this point you can still, if you were inclined to, to consent, you could still reflect that in the, the record if you're treating it as if you didn't have proper notice because you didn't get um, the additional copies that were requested. I guess well, the, the question is whether there's any objection um, at all to that. Why don't we go through the process in case they, they're, we'll see where we're at. And um, if we're going to, if we're not going to object, I think we'll just um, dot our I's and cross our T's because we didn't actually get notice. Um, so let's, why don't we take the vote? And that way should be, you know, more clear. Does anybody want to make that motion? Can I ask another question? Yep. Um, if this land is being accessed to the town of New Paltz, correct? The, we're asked the village is being lead agency because it's a village project. I just want to be clear, since it's the town of New Paltz that's buying the land from Mohawk, is my understanding. Is that correct, Ms. Labruto? That's correct. So that's one action of many actions. And if it would be helpful, I could share my screen and just kind of go through what 
all of those many actions are. But I guess the reason the village is the lead agency is because they are undertaking the action to start, I mean, without their project to find these additional sources of water, we wouldn't need the subdivision. So they're doing the project essentially, they need to be lead agency because they're doing the project even though it is on town land. That's and they've been given the waiver to do that on town land. Is that correct? So they've been given a waiver to not have to undergo site plan approval, steep slope or grading permit approval by the town's planning board, but subdivision is still required. And the town board's decision to acquire the 2.4 acres is still required. Okay, but if the village, I'm sorry, I'm, just, I'm not trying to be obstructive. I'm just trying to understand this. If the village is doing building or engineering, on town land. May, may I explain something to the, Sure, this is, this of is, course. This is a town of New Paltz project. The village of New Paltz is the administrator for municipal water. So this is a town project because the village is responsible for managing municipal water that serves the village who are town residents, town outside of the, the, the village, town districts, SUNY New Paltz, the, the K through 12 school district. This is a town of New Paltz project. The villages is just the, the, the entity within the town that's responsible for its administration. So basically you're just approving your own project. This is not a, a village specific project. This is a town of New Paltz project. The same well, that's, I guess, that's, uh, that was what I had assumed from reading all the material. And I understood exactly what you just explained. So my question is, then if this is a town of New Paltz project and the village is administering it, why is the village planning board rather than the town planning board lead agency? I just like, qual I just like a clarification. So it's the village board of trustees, I believe that's the lead agency or that declared its ah, intent, ah, not, not ah, the planning board. Thank you, that is, that makes sense then, okay. Okay, why don't we take the vote and just um, go through that process. Jane, you wanna make the motion? Um, the village of New Pulse. I thought, I thought that, did somebody else not make it already? Sure. Okay. Well, um, I'm, I move that the Village of New Paltz uh, trustees be made lead agency for the water project that takes place on the town of New Paltz land. Seeker review. Seeker right? review. Is that right, Ashley? Yes, it could be. Um you move that you consent to the village of New Paltz Board yes. of Trustees being yes. the lead agency under seeker for the- Correct, yes. For this project. Yes. Okay, we have a second. Second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Five. Okay, so I think in our minds, I think I feel better that we did that, even <laughs> rather yeah, than get into an argument as, yeah. uh, as to uh, the notice and all this other stuff. I had a couple. I have a couple of more questions, just um, based on this plan that perhaps Mayor uh, Rogers can answer. I didn't see an access road. Lyle, did you on the plan? How do you guys get in there to do the drilling? It's forest. This is Tim. The drilling was done about three and a half years ago. So this is a project that we've been working on with the Mohonk Preserve. Uh -huh. And there, there are, and, and I think uh, what was described in, in the Chazen presentation is we're talking about four different wellheads on, on right. four different geologic features. Actually, well four and well five. So this is well four. Well four and well five are on a similar geologic feature. But there are a total of four wells. Three of them are on the, the currently town of New Paltz owned water treatment plant property. And this fourth one is just on the other side of the property. Like you, you just walk there. There's a- Yeah, yeah, a, yeah. I, I, I read the map. I understand that. But you are you drilling a new well drilling, uh, as already, the fourth one? 
already drilled, already tested. Uh, okay. okay. The only reason we're, we're doing this is because it has been tested for, for quality and yield. And it's, it's, a, it's a well that's worth investing in and connecting to our, our treatment plant. Okay, because there was stuff in there about blasting, and then I thought, well, wait a minute, they're going in there, and I don't see a road, so that's why I was asking. Okay, thank you for the clarification. It's more like a path. It's, it's yeah, it's, I saw a path. path. <laughs> it, there, the, the, it's the, this is you know we can go walk up there sometime. I've been. I love that. Places. I'd love to see it. Really it's beautiful. The the reservoirs are incredibly beautiful. Where these wells are sited, it's incredibly beautiful. It's exactly the kind of place where you want to get your drinking water from. Good. And just to speak briefly about blasting, I think what we said was that no blasting was anticipated that it would be right. ripping. But you know, in addition to the wells that have already been installed, um, there you know there is the conduit and all of the utility connections. Sure. That's to address disturbance of that effect as well. Right. Well, when I see anticipated, that that is why I asked the question whether the drill whether the wells had been drilled. And then if it had, they had not been, I would have asked about, you know, blasting in that area. So that it's all not necessary now. Hi, Jennifer, did, did you have a question? No, personal question. Maybe I should ask on the side since I live on Mountain Rest Road and I have a well. Um, <laughs> Interesting. Well, go ahead. Go well, ahead. Like, so when the, that water district was created, the Mountain Rest Road residents, you know, that are town residents were given the option to connect to the well, I mean, to the, the village municipal water system. And our, the previous owners of my home decided not to do that. Is, is this option gonna be um, given to residents that haven't connected before? must live much further down on Mountain Rest. You're probably not close to the water treatment plant property. No, I'm, yeah, I'm at. Are you near Spees Road? Spees no. Road, it would be above the plant. The plant. Right, so Spees is above, but it, it right, looks any, like it's anyway, fairly, you know, it's on the way, right, it's any, pretty far up. Right, I mean, I, I, grew up, I grew up off of Mountain Rest Road. So the only properties that could connect that I guess it's considered water district number four, these were the first out of the village customers um, that were offered connection in probably the, like the 1970s because my parents were offered a connection and they couldn't- I live in front of house. your parents' house. Right. So <laughs> if, if you are not connected, you could on your dime connect at this point. But right. you know, back in the 70s, my parents were offered to connect for like $2,000 and they couldn't afford it. Right. I think that's what happened with our house. But I didn't know if like, uh, you know, not just for me, but anybody else um, on the road or in that district that wanted to connect if there was going to be any additional offer at this point. The, yeah, this project and, and Water District 4 have nothing to do with each other. Okay. Yeah, because this is, this is, you know, up next to the treatment plant property. So even if you lived next to the treatment plant property, there wouldn't be enough pressure um, from the, the main coming off the, the road to serve your house. So this is just adding to the general um, water supply for the village? Yeah, so we currently buy 60% of our water from the DEP, depending on precipitation, and 40% we source from the four upland reservoirs. So this will just hopefully allow us to buy less of that expensive DEP water that's appreciated at 289% in the last 16 years. I have to tell you, um, Tim, uh, I don't mind paying for the water. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I'm happy to pay for the water. Mm -hmm. So I know you're concerned with the increase in costs and I know many residents are, but, and this is a very good project, but you know, it, it's, it's, it's okay. I'll pay you we, more we if you always, wanna up we, my bill. We always wanna have a connection to the DEP. I think that's incredibly valuable to always have a connection to the Catskill Aqueduct and the Ashokan Reservoir as our backup. We yeah. just wanna buy less of it if we can, instead of buying 60%, if we can buy some number less than 60% and then source more local water. Because actually our local water is of higher quality and it costs less to then put through our multi-million dollar water treatment filtration plant. 
So then the operating expenses of the filtration plant will be less if we're putting super high quality water through it, which is the, this entire, you know, the, the, the entire world of water filtration is pretty silly. We're taking like incredibly high quality water from the Shokan, putting it through a five and a half million dollar plant. We're taking incredibly high quality water from the reservoirs, putting it through this five and a half million dollar plant. You know, you, you could drink this water fresh. You don't need to put it through these fancy filtration systems, yeah. but that's what we're required to do by law. And is the chlorination part of that too? Yeah, all 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 that's the filter has that's to be the disinfected with with chlorine. Even yeah. New York City has to disinfect water with chlorine. Hmm. They don't have to filter it, but they have to disinfect it. They sure don't filter it. Okay. Real good. Anybody else have questions? Okay, is there anything else we need to do? Ashley? No. So just procedurally, you um you need to have a public hearing on the application, but you can't do that until secret's complete. So I don't know, um, you know, if Karen had, or Mayor Rogers have an update as to where the village is with the secret review process, but you'll have to wait to schedule the public hearing until that's completed. Um, I, I can say that we are anticipating a secret determination on Wednesday at the village board meeting. So the 26th. So do you want to come back after that, right after that? Hmm. I, mean, I think we'd like to complete the process as, as soon as possible. Um, I'm not sure, you know. Okay, why don't we? Can we put uh, them on the agenda? Can we put them on the agenda for the 14th as well? Hoping that they'll get it. Alana, are we good? Uh, yeah, I don't see why not. You just set the public hearing and then I'm okay. like assuming they'll make the determination at the next meeting and then it's fine. I'll just send out all the noticing stuff. Do we want to do that now? Set the public hearing already? Yeah. No, I think we have to, shouldn't we wait until they finish just in case they don't? Yeah, you could wait. It, technically the application is not complete for purposes of the subdivision until secret is complete. Okay. Okay. All right, then I think we're set. Are there any questions for us? At our next meeting, we'll set the public hearing. As long as everything is completed at, at the village. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is there anything else? Okay, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night.